I'm super excited. I'm super excited about the release of Cars Coda Clinic. I had the absolute pleasure of interviewing Sarah, Tarlin, and Swami, and I can't wait for you to hear the sections for those who missed it. But what I'm even more excited about is that Coda 22 is back. Now, I'm hoping I have a haircut by then, and I'm hoping I'm gonna see you in Melbourne on April 3rd to April 6th, 2022. Book off your time. We're working on the program. It's coming together. It's going to be an unbelievable time. It's a reunion. We all need this. We all need you to be there. So take a look at codeofchange.org for details. But I can't wait to see you down under in just under a year. See you soon. Dr. Sarah Gray, good friend, intensivist, emerge doc, extraordinary from Toronto. You haven't changed. I look ridiculous. <laughs> I haven't had, had a haircut for 10 months. I'm wearing a cap. But you know what, Sarah, I want to talk to you. I understand you got a case you want to share. Yeah, I had this crazy case, David. Uh, so I think we should talk through it. Hit it. Let's see what okay. you got. This guy comes into the emergency department with chest pain. He's about 50 uh, and he's got a cardiac history like diabetic, hypertensive. He had a previous MI and he says he's been having these episodes of chest pain. Uh, and we're, we're chatting at the bedside and he and he's like, wait, like I'm having one now. Uh, and he kind of gets diaphoretic and a bit gray. He's clutching his chest a bit. And I look up at the monitor and he's in VTAC, uh, like a good, solid, sustained VTAC. So he still has a pulse. He's still talking to me, but he certainly doesn't feel good. Um, and he's getting, you know, pretty sweaty. Uh, so we roll in the crash cart. We give him some pain meds and we, we cardiovert him. And he goes back into sinus and he's like, Ooh, that, that didn't feel very good. He wasn't very happy with my cardio version. And he stays in sinus for about a minute or so. And then he goes back into VTAC and we zap him again. He goes back to sinus another minute and he does it again. And now he's getting seriously unhappy with me. Uh, he's like, what's your name again? I'm like, oh, it's Dr. David Carr, uh, which is my standard line. Uh, but like this guy is having recurrent VT right in front of me. Did you think, and I'm not up to date on the most current ACLS, but did you think about a peric uh, pericordial thump instead? A, a precordial thump? Yeah, you know, uh, that's a great idea. I, I'm kidding. I I'm not much of a precordial thumper. Maybe I, I should give been, it a whirl. It's been so long. So this guy, <laughs> he's in VT storm. Is that true? Yeah, right. So he's having recurrent episodes and people sort of debate this definition of VT storm, but we think three or more episodes in a 24 hour period. And they've got to be like good episodes of VTAC where it's lasting more than 30 seconds or it needs some therapy to convert it. So yeah, he's in VT storm or in electrical storm, whatever term you want to use. And do you distinguish between monomorphic, polymorphic? Is that important? Yeah, right. So you got to have a look. Um, so this guy, he was in monomorphic VTAC. Uh, when you look at him, like all the QRS complexes, they're the same height, they're the same morphology, but it does make a difference, right? If it's polymorphic or torsad, you're going to treat it a little bit differently. Uh, but this guy was straight up monomorphic VTAC. And, in, and just, you're the expert, tell me, dual sequential defibrillation, is that only for VF? Can you do it in VT? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, nobody knows. Uh, is what I would say at this stage. There's certainly, you know, um, pilot data in VF uh, that's maybe it's helpful. And that's really in refractory VF arrest. Uh, in VT arrest, I might try it. This guy still had a pulse, so I think we weren't yeah. there yet. Um, okay. But uh, certainly that's getting, you know, the dose VF trials going on now. We should have better data about this by the end of next year. Okay, so sounds like this guy's maybe ischemic VT. Are there other causes, reversible causes we need to know about? Yeah, so, and you wanna be thinking through those reversible causes. We only find a cause in about a quarter of these patients, uh, but obviously if you do find it, that's what you wanna be treating. Ischemia is the big one. So you wanna catch a good ECG, cause if there's obviously, if you have an ST elevation MI there, maybe you're activating your cath lab, getting your cardiologists involved earlier. 
Um, and you also have a look at that ECG for Brugada, for Torsage, to make sure you really are clear on your diagnosis. And then the other common causes are checking the electrolytes, particularly potassium, magnesium. They can cause this. Uh, you can check the thyroid. Thyrotoxicosis can do this. Some of the stimulant uh, recreational drugs can do this. So sending a tox screen might help you. Uh, but you certainly want to think through those reversible causes uh, to make sure you're not missing anything. So you basically electrocuted this guy, Sarah. Are there any non-electrical therapies? Are there any drugs that work? Yeah. So, and you really, you do want to be using your antiarrhythmics here. Um, and there are some options in the guidelines that you can use. Uh, amiodarone is obviously popular. Uh, procainamide is the other common choice. Um, I tend to go procainamide personally, although I think that's expert opinion. Uh, but based on the Procameo trial from 2017, uh, there was good efficacy with procainamide to stop the tachycardia. So I tend to follow their protocol. So they give a 10 milligram per kilo bolus. Uh, it's over about 20 minutes. Um, and so that's what I run, but you could choose amio instead, or depending on where you work, uh, sodalol and lidocaine are also in the guidelines. So it depends a bit what jurisdiction you work in and what you have available to you. So you gave this guy proke? Yeah. So I hang proke on him. And so yeah. in the meantime, like he's still going in and out of VTAC. I'm still shocking him. I hang yeah. the procainamide. It's going to be up there for 20 minutes. Like it's not uh, like my magic bullet that's working for me immediately. Uh, and he's, you know, getting pretty tired of getting recurrently shocked. If the, the pro, if it did it work? No, no. Oh. And it didn't work. So what do you right? do? And What's so this? in the meantime, at the bedside, I, so I'm like, oh God, what else can I do for this poor guy? Cause I've sent his lights and things, but obviously there's a bit of a lag until you get those back. Uh, so the other big thing you want to think about is reducing their catecholamine surge, because we know that that's a big driver of keeping people in VTAC. So you want to give these people analgesia and sedation to chill them right out. And so we had started with little bits of, uh, of procedural sedation, say, you know, bits of analgesia while we were cardioverting him. As he gets more and more uncomfortable, I'm turning those doses up and up. Uh, I am, let's be honest, I'm hoping he has a little bit of amnesia here and doesn't really remember how much this is hurting him. Uh, and, you know, one of the options is actually to sedate people so deeply that you really intubate them and snow them. And that's where we went with this guy. We actually, you, we intubated him. You are such an intensivist. Of course you <laughs> intubated him. I would have just shocked him and shocked him and shocked him and been more of a cowboy or cowgirl. I mean... I intubate all my ankle sprains too. So, it's so don't so worry, true. David. That's just what I do. Yeah. Yeah. So it, you, you, it, it, you, you did your catecholamine thing. It worked. Yeah. You were done. No, no. So I'm still, so, and this is the sad part, especially as an intensivist, my intubation did not fix him. Huh? Uh, so you still need more, right? Cause I'm sedating him. I'm shocking him. My procainamide's running. I've snowed him. I've intubated him. And so now I'm sort of down to my, you know, my last move really, uh, which is Esmolol. So Esmolol is a selective beta one beta blocker, uh, short onset, nice quick half-life. So it's going to go away fast if it's not working. Uh, and so we decide at this stage to try it. There isn't great data for this in VTAC. The data that's out there is pretty small studies and it's mostly for VF, um, but the physiology makes sense. Uh, and so we decided to give it a whirl. And, uh, you get it? and it worked. And so, right, hooray. Uh, so the key here with the Esmolol, you got to think about this dosing in advance uh, because most people write it down as this uh, microgram dosing, right? So 500 micrograms per kilo. And I had always memorized that dose. And then I vividly remember the first time I'm doing this at the bedside. And I'm thinking, okay, 500 micrograms per kilo. And this guy's 70 kilos. So that's 35,000 micrograms. So and I like say out loud to the nurse, like I want 35,000 micrograms. <laughs> and she looks at me like I'm insane. And I feel a little bit insane. 
And while you're all stressed out in this resuscitation, like my math is not that good. So now I just remember it in milligrams, which is in fact, like how it's dosed on our vial. So that's a bit easier for me. It's worth checking at your place, like how it's dosed, but you just use 0.5 milligrams per kilo. So much easier. So then I'm ordering him a 35 milligram bolus uh, and you can put that up pretty quick and then you can run an infusion at 10% of that dose. So for a 70 kilo guy, your infusion is going at 3.5 milligrams per minute. Uh, and that dosing just makes much more sense to my brain. Uh, and when we put that up, it actually worked. It slowed him down. Uh, and he was able, he went up to the ICU, he got his full cardiac workup, he got his cath, uh, he did quite well in the end. I went up to visit him to make sure he wasn't too mad at me and uh, he remembered very little. Maybe he was just being gracious about it, you never know, but uh, we were friends in the end. Fantastic case. The math kind of sounds like you're converting pesos to Canadian dollars, but I won't even go there. Sarah, Put this talk together. Give me some pearls. Give the listeners something to remember this talk by maybe four or five pearls. What do you got? Okay. So you've got your person in recurrent VT. You're obviously shocking them while they still have a pulse that's synchronized cardioversion, right? And you want to look for the reversible causes. So looking at a good ECG early is key to make sure it's monomorphic, make sure you're not missing ischemia. Then you wanna look for the reversible causes, check their lights, make sure you're not missing something there. You want either procainamide or amiodarone, I think are the two most common antiarrhythmics used, uh, but check just in your local place of what ha you have available to you so you know what you're gonna ask for. Sedation and analgesia are not just nice for your patient in terms of making them feel good, they're actually really useful in reducing that catecholamine surge. And then last but not least, think about Esmolol it can make all the difference. Fantastic pearls. It's wonderful to see you. I just want to make one final plug. I listened to voices in my head in Berlin, smack, das smack a few years ago. Now more than ever, it's important for people to have self-compassion and listen. I'm thrilled you're still changing practice. You're still changing me. Thank you so much, Dr. Gray. Thanks, David. Bye everybody.